Welcome to another chapter of Read Aloud. Today we will be reading chapter nine. And I'm actually not going to ask you your thinking question at the beginning of this video because it contains just a little bit of a spoiler. So I'll go ahead and ask that at the end. Let's go ahead and get started reading. Chapter nine, The Obscure Hideout. Ella, Mavic whispered, wake up. Arella slowly opened her eyes. Light from the sinking sun peeped in through the windows. She blinked and looked around. She was lying on a very old, very dusty couch in a house that obviously had not been lived in for several years. It was furnished and stocked with regular household items, but everything was covered with dust and cobwebs. Mavic knelt in front of her. What? Arella asked. He smiled. Where his teeth should have been was an orange peel. Oranges! Arella's stomach grumbled. The day was almost over and all she'd eaten was a scoop of mush that morning. Can I have one? He finished his bite and pulled the peel from his mouth. Sure, Elf. He tossed her an orange with his other hand. Arella sat up and closed her eyes as the sweet, tangy smell made her smile. Why do you always smell your food? Mavic teased. I like to savor it, all right. She began peeling the orange and setting the peelings in a neat little pile on the couch. Where did you get these, anyway? Stole them. She froze mid-bite. It's okay, nobody saw me. I'm a lot quieter and more efficient when I don't have a wanted little witch to lug around. Arella punched his arm and glared at him. For some reason, her mind decided on that moment to flood her thoughts with memories of what had occurred before she passed out on the couch. She'd been so distracted by her hunger that she temporarily forgot what danger they were in. She put a hand over her mouth in horror. Mavic, oh my gosh, you too. Me too what? You exposed yourself out there. Now everyone knows that you're a warlock and now we're both wanted. No, nah, I doubt anyone noticed how five large trees just happened to topple over on all those clankers. You're joking about this? This is even worse for you. There aren't supposed to have ever been warlocks and Dovis. Mavic, you just don't get it, he mimicked Arella. You have no right to judge because you have no idea how hard it is. Arella growled. You are so infuriating. Mavic ignored her and began searching through cabinets and drawers. What are you doing? she asked irritably. Just taking a look around. Aren't we supposed to be running for our lives? Calm down, this whole area has been abandoned for years. There used to be a bunch of witches that lived in this area. Um, then wouldn't that make this the first place the clinkers would look? I said there used to be witches in this area, corrected Mavic. They're dead now. If there's anything that used to scare people more than witches, it was the idea of an angry witch ghost. People are either clueless about this place or scared out of their minds of it. Arella frowned as she processed this. Mavic was strangely full of information about a past that he wasn't much a part of. Plus, he continued, we might find some stuff here that could come in handy. He pulled a long tarp from out of a closet. Nice. Arella raised an eyebrow in disapproval. You're just going to steal these people's things? Ella, look around. No one's lived here for like 12 years. I don't think they'd mind. He continued rummaging around in cabinets and drawers, sometimes stuffing things into his backpack. Arella watched him closely. As he searched, his behavior seemed to contradict itself. Every now and then, he'd stop, sigh, and bite his lip, his eyebrows coming together in worry, and then the next minute he'd be whistling nonchalantly. Mavic wasn't exactly an open book, but Arella knew him well enough to know what was going on. She thought back to when she was seven years old and was playing in the forest. She'd wandered away from the pond and found herself just a stone's throw away from a large grizzly bear. It hadn't noticed her as its back was turned, but Arella froze in place, rooted to the spot by fear. Suddenly, Mavic appeared in a nearby bush and whispered for her to come to him quietly. She was too frightened to even move. Mavic looked incredibly worried for a moment. Then, all of a sudden, his expression changed to a look of mischief. 
He gestured for her to come closer. His change in demeanor was enough to distract Arella from the situation at hand, and she was curious to see what he was up to. As soon as she reached him, he whispered, Race you back to the village, and started running. Arella raced after him, forgetting to check to see if the bear ever noticed her. Back in the present, Arella knew that his apparent indifference was just an act. Mavic was scared. She doubted he had a real plan, and she knew he held himself responsible for her, even if he wasn't. And now they were both in danger, thanks to his little tree stunt. Except today, it wasn't her he was trying to distract, but himself. Arella decided to leave him alone for a moment and began to explore the house, popping orange slices in her mouth as she walked. At one time, this place might have been a quaint cottage. Small, but charming. Unfortunately, it looked like a lot of things had been broken. A chair lay crumpled on the floor. The glass to a china cabinet was shattered, and there were odd slash marks on the furniture. What on earth happened here? She wondered as she followed the hallway to the back of the house. There was one room with a large bed and a baby bassinet. The window was broken, and a small boot lay on the floor. Arella picked it up and examined it. On the sole of the boot, it read, Property of Lenick Orphanage. Mavic, Arella called, jogging down the hallway. Yeah? Mavic was lounging on the couch, nose deep in a very thick book. What's this? she asked, handing him the boot. Mavic put down his book. He took the boot in both his hands with a half smile. Oh, yeah. Gosh, my feet were small. What? I forgot I lost a boot that night. Threw it at one of those stupid clankers before I jumped out the window with you. I think it may have gone partially deaf from you screaming in my ear, by the way, so thanks for that. You mean, this place was... This was your first home, Ella. You lived here for, like, a day. Welcome back. So, this was... She started, but at the mention of the word home, Arella suddenly remembered her parents, Joelle and Taryn, and how she had just disappeared without telling them where she went. She flew into a panic. Oh my gosh, my parents! I've been gone for a night and a day, and they have no idea where I am. I was going to leave them a note. What do I do? I don't want them to get into trouble searching for me. Whoa, calm down. Do you think we could stop by and let them know? No, Ella, are you crazy? Mavic sat up and looked at her seriously. You cannot go back there. I can almost guarantee there's a bunch of clankers stationed all around that house, waiting for you to come back. And what do we do? I need them to know I'm okay. Mavic frowned. Then he looked down as he thought. I think I have an idea. While you were conked out, I read about this cool trick in one of Morton's old books. I've been practicing. Want to see? Arella folded her arms as if to say, this had better be good. Mavic ripped a piece of paper from another old book, Arella cringed at his lack of reverence for book pages, and folded it into what looked like a paper boat. He did a few quick finger gestures that looked something like twisting a knob and pointing, and the boat levitated and soared around the room until it landed neatly in Arella's hands. Neat trick, but how does this help us? You can write a note to your parents and then I'll fold it up and fly it to your house. Hopefully your mom's still keeping the kitchen window open. If not, we'll just have to hope they find it on the ground before it blows away. Mavic, you're a genius! Arella exclaimed, throwing her arms around his neck. Common knowledge, he shrugged. Now look around for something to write on and write with. Arella ran to a desk in the corner. In the drawers, she found old paper quills and a bottle of ink. She excitedly pulled out a piece of paper and began writing. Mom and Dad, it's me. I know you're probably worried, but I'm fine. Those rumors you've heard around town about me, they're true. I'm running away so no one finds me. You will be safer without me. I already missed you so much and don't know when I'll see you again. I love you. Please be safe. 
And don't worry about me. I'm with Mavic. And he kind of has powers, too. He never told me, either. I love you so much, and I hope you're okay. I'll try to send you another note when I can. Love you, Ella. Arella felt the same tug in her gut that she'd felt in the forest when she thought she'd have to say goodbye to Mavic. Her throat constricted, and she thought she might cry. But she didn't. Her emotions were the only thing she had control over in her crazy life, and she refused to loosen her hold. When she finished writing, Mavic was by her side. It's going to be all right, you know, he said quietly. I don't know how, but... Some day it will all work out. Arella simply nodded and handed him the paper. He laid it on the desk and carefully folded it into a paper boat. Well, here goes nothing, he muttered. He did those intricate finger movements and the boat flew out the back window. Do you have to keep steering it? Arella asked. Not if I did it right. The spell is designed so that the boat will find the specified person on its own. What if it never finds them? Well, then I either have to let the spell go, or it'll eat away at my energy until I pass out. Arella gasped. What? It's the truth. Don't worry. It'll be at your house in like a half an hour, and then the spell will end itself. What did you mean about it eating away at your energy? All manipulation has a cost, Ella. You saw what happened to us today. We pushed ourselves too hard, and there were consequences. Consequences? Mavic sighed and sat on the edge of the desk as he explained. It's different for each of us. Warlock manipulation uses physical energy. If a warlock uses too much energy, they become physically exhausted. A warlock needs to be careful because if he pushes himself too hard, they could use up all their energy and die. Die? Only if they're stupid about it. What about witches? Well, witches get their energy from their minds. If you use too much energy, then your head hurts. Now, a witch isn't going to die if she pushes herself too hard, but you still want to be careful. Why? You could go insane. Oh, that's comforting. And you know all this how? I stole a few of Morton's books on manipulation a while back. I hope you don't mind. All this stuff here is technically yours. You found those books here? Where are they now? Underneath the floorboards in the orphanage, I'm afraid. They're huge, and there wasn't any room for them in the backpack. But I found some more books over there if you want to look at them. That's fine. We don't really have time for that anyway. Don't we need to get going soon? Well, I sort of had an idea. He got that uncharacteristic look of uncertainty again. What, Mavic? I was thinking that it's going to be tough to escape without some outside help. I mean, no matter how we disguise ourselves, if the Clankers see two people trying to leave Lennox, it's going to look very suspicious. They know you know how to disguise yourself now. I could make us invisible and inaudible, Arella offered. Then maybe we could travel through the forest. That's an option. But once we get to the forest... Rosh took us a long way away, and neither of us is an expert at survival or manipulation. And the forest can be very dangerous, especially at night. It might be nice to have a little help from someone who has more experience. Who? I honestly don't know if this person's still alive, but I think it's worth a shot. What are you going to do? I'll send a paper boat message. It's going to have to travel a long way, so we'll have to hide out here for a few days to give them time to find us. If we don't hear from them by then, we'll go with your plan and make ourselves invisible and run to the forest. Who is this person? Mavic pointedly averted his eyes and quickly scratched a message onto another piece of paper that he sent flying out the window. All right, that is the end of that chapter. The next chapter is called Blast from the Long Dead Past. All right, your thinking question for today is, who do you think Mavic is trying to contact? And we will read chapter 10 next time. Um, just a quick bonus for this video. Um, Mavic makes a lot of those paper boat flying messages throughout this book. 
and I thought it would be fun to show you guys how to make one. It obviously won't fly because we are not warlocks, but it's fun to make. So if you want to learn how to make a paper boat, keep watching. All right. Bye, guys. All right. In this video, I am going to show you how to create a paper boat. And it looks kind of like this when you're done. Okay. So you can use any size paper. This piece of paper is actually um, smaller than most, but any size works. So you're going to start by folding it in half hot dog style <clears throat> or long ways. And then you're actually going to unfold it. The only reason we did that was to make a crease. Okay. Then we are going to turn it and we are going to fold it the other way. So hamburger or taco style. Okay, so we just folded it. Now I need you to turn it so that there are the flaps at the bottom. Okay, and the folded part should be at the top. Then you're going to take the corner and you're going to fold it in toward the crease, kind of like when you're making a paper airplane. And I like to make the crease nice and sharp by using my thumbnail. I'm going to do the other side as well. And go ahead and pause this video at any point if you need more time to complete a step. Okay? So it was like this, now it's like this. Then you're going to take this flap down here, okay, we have a flap, and we're going to fold it up, okay, let me show that again, flap up. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side, so we're going to flip this over, we're going to fold this side up now. Now it kind of already looks like a boat, but we're not quite done yet. So we want to turn this into a triangle. We have these corners sticking out. There's several ways you can do this. You can just kind of fold these over if you'd like. Um, or you can fold them inward towards each other. It doesn't really matter. Just fold those corners over so that we cannot see them anymore. I just want it to look like a triangle. Okay, get that off there. All right, so we have our triangle. Okay, next part's a little tricky. So at the bottom, there should be a flap. Okay, you should be able to put your thumbs in there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these corners and you're going to put them together. Okay, so we put our thumbs inside and we're going to put these corners together and then lay it flat. Okay. Then we are going to fold up this flap. And fold it up to touch the top. Again, pause at any time if you need it. Paper's getting a little bit thicker now, so a little bit harder to fold. Okay, so we folded that up. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And take the flap and fold it up. And we are almost done. Okay, so just like before, we're going to put our thumbs in, take the corners, and we're going to push those corners together. Okay, again, looks like this. Push the corners together. And here's the fun part kind of tricky so watch. Put your thumbs up here towards the top point. Pinch and pull. Okay, I'll show that one more time. Thumbs are up here. Pinch and pull. And then kind of crease it in. And then open it up. And there's your boat. 
And you can send it flying, like Mavic's message. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. The end.